Good day everybody, my name is Oscar and welcome to a video on all of the creatures which were never implemented into Smilska Below Zero. Now you might be wondering why I'm making this video before the game has even been fully released, but with the developers now solely working on revamping the game's story, they're not looking to add any new fawns to the game before it comes out of early access, so this list should be pretty solid. Some of these creatures might have just been concept art, others have had more work put into them than others, with a few of them having 3D models and animation rigs sorted, but I thought I should cover all of them, just so you guys have an idea of what the developers decided to miss out on. As always, I'm super interested to know which creatures you would have liked to see in the game, so let me know in the comments down below. But just before the video starts, just wanted to let you guys know about the people who sponsored this video, Raid Shadow Legends, so thank you to them for making this video possible. If you haven't heard of this game by now, you must be living under a rock, because it is literally everywhere. Raid Shadow Legends is a new RPG which is set in the world of dark fantasy where you can unlock, upgrade and fight with awesome characters. You start off the game with one rare champion, and then as you progress, you can unlock more and more of them to create an elite set of fighters. I've personally spent most of my time with Slasher, who's a rare fighter with some great stats. He also looks amazing, which is the main reason I like him. You can even sacrifice some of your other champions in the tavern to help boost the stats of your favourite fighters, which is a great way of levelling them up. I've buffed Slasher up with some epic gear which you can get by playing the dungeon mode, among other methods. You can never run out of things to do in the game and it's completely free, so there's absolutely no reason for you to miss out on it. Also, another great thing is that the game has tweakable graphics settings, so you can pretty much run it on whatever device you're using. Also, you can now play Raid on your PC too, so there's no excuse not to play it. If you head to the description down below and click the link to download it, you'll start off with 50,000 silver, and you'll also get a free Epic Champion after 7 days of playing. So go ahead and download it and let me know how you get on with it. So we'll start off with the creatures which were never given a name, and never received any work on them past their concept art stage as far as we know. In this concept by Pat Presley, you can see the Arctic Ray, which we know is in the game at the moment, alongside two other creatures which never made it into production. The creature labelled F3 looks to have six lures hanging from the bottom of its face, perhaps to attract prey to its mouth. With an eye placed either side of the mouth, I'd imagine that maybe the mouth can open pretty wide, perhaps like a basking shark, to catch food as it swims towards the lures. The creature in the top right reminds me a bit of a flea, with a translucent exterior and what looks like a shell on the inside, this definitely would have been an interesting creature to see as a 3D model. Next up we have a collection of concepts from Alex, who was the main artist for Below Zero Creatures. We've had a lot of discussions about these creatures on my Discord server, which you can join through the link in the description, and it seems like these are some of the best creatures which weren't added to the game. Creature A is labelled as having gelatinous body and an internal flagella, which I assume spins around as it moves through the water. We couldn't decide on my server which side of the creature was the front, so let me know which way round you think it would move. Creature B is described as a planktivorous jelly, meaning it feeds on plankton, which carries around a chunk of ice. When it feels threatened, the jelly can retract into the ice shell and its head would seal the ice behind it. Definitely an interesting idea, but I'm not sure how much a creature like this would add to the game. Creature C seems to be a mixture of A and B, with the flagella thing from A and the ice block from B. This one is apparently a filter feeder, which is naturally buoyant. A cool idea, but I think I'd choose Creature A out of the three. Creature D reminds me a lot of the Arrow Ray, a creature which can be found in the lily pad islands and the tree spires. Instead of being a passive creature though, Creature D looks to be inspired by the crash fish. Apparently the fish would swim around and eject a rope when it feels threatened by a predator, and the rope would then either explode, which would cause damage to the pursuer, or blind them to allow the creature to make an escape. Creature E is a very interesting concept which reminds me a lot of the Grav Trap gadget. This creature would have been a filter feeder which could retract into a spherical shell, presumably when it feels threatened. Alex also made some cheeky creatures, presumably named because they'd steal things from the player and basically just be annoying. The first variant he made was a three-legged, three-eyed weird thing which could both swim and stand on the ocean floor. Its fins could turn into feet and it would be able to take treasure and hold it with its jaws before swimming away from the player with it. This artwork also reveals that the Triops was originally created as an annoying creature capable of moving on land as well as underwater. With an oral sucker, the creature would be able to steal things from the player and swim away with a freakishly flexible mouth opening. Creature B here doesn't have any explanation as to what it would do, but it does look awesome. From the looks of it, it has a glowing rear, like a firefly, as well as an awesome pattern on its body. I think it would have been cool to see these little guys swimming around. Finally on this piece, Creature C looks to be a mutated version of Creature A with retractable tentacles also capable of moving on land like a mudskipper. 
Alex also made a piece of concept art for two small fish variants. One of these would be capable of filter feeding with a retractable head which would close up when the creature feels threatened. The second is a disc-like creature which looks similar to the discus fish which can be found in game. This creature would feed by scraping algae from the ice. This definitely would have been a very unique creature but you can see why developers chose not to go for creatures which would require so much extra AI work. This next piece shows off some ideas for predators that were never implemented. Creature A has a translucent body with what looks like a suction cup at the front. I'd guess that these creatures would be some sort of parasite, a bit like a bleeder, which would latch onto your body with the suction cup and suck your blood through the tube, which can be seen through the outside. Creature B reminds me of a spider, so I'm very glad this never made it into the game. By the looks of it, these guys would have six legs as well as two protruding appendages from either side. I've got no idea what these appendages would be used for, so please let me know if you can think of anything. Again, these guys would probably act like a parasite, nipping you as you go past. Creature C looks like it might have been a bit bigger than the other two, maybe the size of a biter, with a bright orange exterior and two arms which look like they have razor sharp blades on them, as well as a mouth similar to that of an anglerfish. I'm pretty glad these guys never made it in. Creature D looks like it might have been a distant cousin of the stalker, with a similar colour scheme and a long snout and body. These guys would have been cool to see, but they're definitely nothing to write home about. Next up we have another collection of predators from Alex. Predator A here looks quite similar to the Shadow Leviathan, mainly in the shape of the rear end and the colour scheme. Predator B and C look like they probably would have been around the size of a biter, with a pair of pincers in front of the mouth and an armoured head. I can imagine these guys would have been quite annoying. D is of course the Cryptosuchus, which was added to the game not too long ago. This creature is one of the earliest concepts I remember seeing, with a rigid proboscis which can act change angle from the base. The creature would have used this proboscis to snatch food, with feelers on the head able to detect odours and vibration. When escaping from predators, this creature would have left a trail of glowing spheres in an attempt to distract the pursuer. Alex's final public unnamed creature for Below Zero was five variations of a small fish. Diagrams A, B and D look like they've taken inspiration from a frog with the frog-like legs at the back. Diagram C looks like it might have been a relative of the Pinacarid, while the creature E looks like it might have been some sort of filter feeder, using the weird structure at the top of his body to filter the water as it swam so it could feed on the nutrients. Now we'll move on to the creatures which had a bit more work on them, with a name decided for them and some more detailed concept art, or even 3D models. First up we have the Kite Wing Sky Ray. Personally I think it's a shame that more flying creatures weren't added to Below Zero, as even though you spend most of your time underwater, you do spend a fair amount of time looking at the sky, so it might have been nice to see something else up there to liven it up a bit. As you can tell from the art, these guys would have been larger than the player, and by the looks of it, it would have been predatory, giving us something else to look out for when we're out of the water. Sticking with the flying creatures theme, the other main creature which had serious potential to be implemented into Below Zero is called the Dragonfly. This creature was first seen in the early access trailer for the first Subnautica game from back in 2014. This looks to be a cousin of the Skyray with a much longer wingspan and a tail which would fly behind it. These guys look really cool and they even had animation rigs set up for them, ready to go. Unfortunately, they've never been implemented and I can't see them being added to the game before Below Zero leaves early access. This next creature is called the Electrogami, which apparently would have had bioelectrical capabilities similar to the ampule. To attack, this predator would unfurl its body to reveal an electrical weapon and a gaping jaw to eat the prey that it stunned with a shock. Honestly, this is a cool looking creature, but the whole electrical weapon bit seems a bit over the top. Next up we have the Crested Reaper. This is another one of the earliest concept arts we had for Below Zero, essentially an arctic variation of the Reaper Leviathan from the first game. According to the art, the Crested Reaper would have been about the same size as an orca, so smaller than the original Reaper, capable of bumping ice to create flows to force large prey into the water, and it would also hunt smaller fish below. On top of its head, the Reaper would have had an ice ram covered in scars from years of use. It would also have had the signature Reaper quad mandibles, but with this creature they seem to have been closed around the mouth rather than being open like the traditional tropical Reaper. I think this is a missed opportunity honestly, but I'm glad that developers have spent their time on the other creatures too. One of my personal favourite creatures which never made it into Below Zero is the Hover Lizard. This would have been the arctic cousin of the Hoverfish and it already had a fully made 3D model for it, ready to be put into the game. Unfortunately for some reason the developers chose not to implement the Hover Lizard and I can understand why as it wouldn't have added much gameplay value but still it's adorable and I want one. Next up is the Pygmy Crab Squid, also known as the Grab Squid. A more developed version of Alex's cheeky creatures, this was a distant relative of the Crab Squid, which would have been drawn to electrical devices, probably capable of stealing batteries and other electrical items from the player's inventory as you swam around. 
This next creature is known as the Shard. This creature would have travelled slowly through the water, vertically, like a knife, and would have lured prey from the sea floor with its glowing lure, which protrudes from his head. When attacked, the Shard would release a slime which rapidly forms an ice shell around its body, which the Shard would then swim away from, while the Predator is still focused on destroying the shell. Next up we have a member of the Reefback family, the Icebreaker. According to Alex, the Icebreaker evolved from the Reefback with the ability to cut its way through the surface ice to stay near the plankton, which it feeds on. The Icebreaker would have had a huge ridge on the top of its body, which it uses as a weight to crack the pack ice that it wanted to get through. The underside of the icebreaker is shaped so it can cut perfectly through ice after rising above the water and smashing down on it. Honestly, this is a really awesome concept and even without the ice breaking mechanic I think that the arctic reef pack would have been a welcomed addition to Below Zero. It just looks awesome. This next creature is called the Thalassatian and honestly it's one of the coolest creatures concepts I've seen. As you can see, Alex did quite a few variations of the creature with different colour schemes, mouth styles and fin positions. From the look of the creature, the Thalassatian would have probably been a filter feeder as it doesn't look like it would be very manoeuvrable or quick and would instead slowly drift through the ocean with its mouth open hoping to catch plankton like life forms to feed on. These guys would have been pretty big as you can see, the player could actually quite easily fit in the creature's mouth. I think out of all these designs my favourite would have to be A because it really fits in with the arctic setting but equally I think D could be awesome if the glowing parts on it were barnacles or something. Actually I think E could work as well as a deep sea variant of the creature but I think out of all the creatures that were never implemented this has to be one of the ones I'm disappointed about the most. Up next we have the Shard Runner. According to Alex's artwork the Shard Runner would have been an ambush predator which lurks in the crystal caves which spins out long, fragile tripwires to detect prey, just like how a spider spins a web to catch flies. As shown in the art, if the player touches the web, they could either be pulled in towards the shard runner, or the creature would have been launched along the web towards the player to attack them. This creature probably would have been a pretty good fit for the crystal cave biome. I can imagine having to swim through the gaps in the webs. I think that would be pretty cool, but I can see why they didn't go with it. This creature is called the Light Spinner, which would apparently have been drawn to the lights and noise of submarine vehicles such as a sea truck. They can spin webbing over light emitting parts of the sub, like the lamps and windscreen, which would make it harder for the player to see, and they could also slow the vehicle down by crowding it and causing drag. I think this is a pretty cool idea, but I can imagine that these guys would get pretty annoying for the player and not in a fun way. The penultimate creature, which was never implemented, is known as the Ascender Worm. This creature is another idea thought up by Alex, which would approach the player and grab them by the arm. Then, the worm would rapidly inflate itself with gas, which would force the creature and the player up towards the surface. With the fast pressure change, the ascender worm would be able to kill the player and then presumably eat them. This is a really cool idea, but as Subnautica doesn't have any water pressure mechanics, it wouldn't make much sense to include the ascender worm in Below Zero. The final creature which was never implemented is the Ice Dragon. This creature has been the subject of huge debate since it was first revealed as a potential leviathan for Below Zero. Lots of people really liked the design, while others really hated it. Personally, I wasn't a massive fan of the Ice Dragon as I thought it didn't really fit with the style of other creatures in the game, but the developers did actually put a lot of time into potentially making the Ice Dragon into a real thing, creating a fully textured 3D model for it. However, in the end it was announced that the Ice Dragon was cut because it would have been a lot of work and there wasn't anywhere in the world where it would fit because they'd also cut the area where the Ice Dragon was going to live. Let me know about whether you would have been a fan of the Ice Dragon if it made it into the game. Maybe give some ideas about where it could have gone if it was added. Anyway, that's it guys. That's all the creatures that have been so far made public but haven't made it into Below Zero. It's very unlikely that any of these creatures will ever be implemented into Below Zero as the developers are focused on getting the story done and pushing the game out of early access as soon as they can. As I said, I'd love to know which of these creatures is your favourite, so let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to join my Discord server, there's a link in the description, it's a really great place. Again, thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video, I'm at university now, which is why there aren't many videos being pushed out, but this has made it so I can spend more time on a video while I'm here. But that's pretty much it, so until the next one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Try, my friends.